wanted to die. In a way, I did not protect Lyle. Lyle and Eric Menendez, the brothers who've been locked up for over 30 years for killing their parents, might finally catch a break. Their family and supporters are going hard, trying to get the courts to take another look at their 1989 case. They're bringing new receipts to the table and pointing out how we've leveled up our understanding of trauma and abuse since then. Netizens think they might be free before Thanksgiving. In the Menendez brothers' case, family members are pushing for their release before Thanksgiving as the Los Angeles DA considers recommending them for resentencing in the 1989 murders of their parents. Is the brother's story a so-called abuse excuse? Are they telling the truth? And what's the evidence that could set them free? This is the full story of the Menendez brothers. Back in 1989, Lyle and Eric Menendez, just 21 and 18, shocked everyone by shooting their rich parents, Jose and Kitty, in their fancy Beverly Hills home. At first, they said they didn't do it, but Eric spilled to his therapist a year later, leading to their arrest. The trials that followed were major news, with the brothers dropping a bombshell. They claimed self-defense after years of physical, emotional, and horrific essay from their dad, while their substance-addicted mom just looked away. The first round of trials in 93 ended in a deadlock. When they tried again in 96, the judge wasn't having it with the abuse claims and shut a lot of that testimony down. In the end, the brothers were found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy, getting hit with life sentences, no chance of parole. For the longest time, everyone thought that was it. Case closed. But now, new stuff's coming to light, and people are asking if the Menendez brothers really got a fair shake. I grew up knowing and feeling something wasn't right. The feeling in their house and the father-son interactions were just off. Yeah, this is their own family talking, the relatives of their dead parents. Even Kitty's sister, in her 90s today, is speaking out for her nephews. Their actions, while tragic, were the desperate response of two boys trying to survive the unspeakable cruel of their father. It's got everyone talking again, wondering if justice was actually served or if we missed something big. In May 2023, the Menendez brothers' legal team filed a writ of habeas corpus, presenting what they claim is significant new evidence supporting the brothers' abuse allegations. Two key pieces of evidence came out. A letter written by Eric Menendez to his cousin Andy, dated eight months before the murders. In the letter, Eric allegedly describes the ongoing abuse he was suffering at the hands of his father. The letter was found at a family member's home and appears to corroborate testimony given by Andy at the first trial which, by the way, was largely discredited in the second trial. A declaration by Roy Rossillo, a former member of the boy band Menudo, stating that he too was essay-ed by Jose Menendez. Rossillo claims his happened at the Menendez home, making the brother's story all the more credible. On the other hand, the people who believe they should be in prison forever argue that the Menendez brothers didn't discuss their father's abuse with their psychiatrist before their arrest. Might this mean they concocted this story after their arrest to get a lighter punishment? In other words, was this an abuse excuse? Well, keeping quiet about SA is often a tangled web of emotions and societal pressures. Shame is a massive factor, with studies showing up to 75% of male SA survivors feeling intense guilt about what happened. Add to that the fear of not being believed, which keeps about 80% of child SA victims silent well into adulthood. In the Menendez case, you've got the added layer of family secrets and the terror terrifying reality that their abuser was still alive. About 63% of survivors say fear of retaliation kept them quiet. Even after an abuser dies, many victims struggle to speak up. The shame doesn't magically disappear, and the fear of not being believed or being blamed can linger for years. For guys especially, there's this toxic masculinity pressure that makes it feel impossible to admit vulnerability. It's a complex, heavy situation that often leaves survivors feeling like silence is their only option. But here's the thing, just because someone doesn't speak up right away doesn't mean it didn't happen. Sometimes the trauma is just too big to put into words, and it takes time to process and find the courage to speak out. 
Beyond the new evidence, supporters argue that societal understanding of trauma, abuse, and its effects has evolved significantly since the 1990s. What was once dismissively called the abuse excuse is now recognized as a legitimate factor in understanding criminal behavior, particularly in cases involving long-term abuse of minors. Ana Maria Baralt, niece of Jose Menendez, spoke at a recent press conference. If Lyle and Eric's case were heard today, with the understanding we now have about abuse and PTSD, there is no doubt in my mind that their sentencing would have been very different. This sentiment was echoed by Joan Vandermolen, sister of Kitty Menendez. Today we know better. We know that abuse has long-lasting effects and victims of trauma sometimes act in ways that are very difficult to understand. In a major plot twist, more than 20 family members from both sides of the Menendez family have teamed up to fight for Lyle and Eric's freedom. We're talking siblings, cousins, the whole crew, even people who, under California's Marzi's Law, are technically considered victims themselves. It's like a family reunion, but with a mission. On October 19th, 2024, these relatives showed up in force outside the LA Criminal Courts building. They weren't just there to hang out. They dropped a bombshell announcement about their official campaign to get the brothers out of prison. They've even set up a website, www.justiceforericandlyle.org, and they're asking everyone to sign their petition. It's basically a digital rally cry for the Menendez brothers' freedom. Joan spoke emotionally about her nephews. Lyle and Eric have already paid a heavy price, discarded by a system that failed to recognize their pain. They have grown, they have changed, and they have become better men despite everything that they've been through. Kitty's nephew, Alan Anderson, added, I've known Lyle and Eric my whole life. I can tell you without a doubt that they are not the villains they've been portrayed as. They were boys, young, scared, and abused by their father in ways no child should ever experience. The family members emphasized that their support for Lyle and Eric's release is not about politics, but about truth, justice, and healing. They argue that the brothers have served over 30 years in prison, during which time they have shown significant growth and rehabilitation. Not only they have been on their best behavior all this time, but they have been offering support and advocating for young victims of SA. The Menendez brothers legal team is pursuing two parallel tracks for potential release. The first one is basically a habeas corpus. The writ filed in May 2023 seeks to overturn the brothers' convictions based on the new evidence. If granted, this could potentially lead to a new trial. The second one is potential resentencing. Under California law, the brothers may qualify for resentencing based on various factors, including their rehabilitation efforts while in prison. If resentenced, a judge would have the ability to recall the original sentence and impose a new one, potentially allowing for their release. Mark Garagos expressed cautious optimism about the resentencing option. But under the resentencing laws in California, they clearly can't qualify. We filed originally for the conviction to be overturned. That's what a writ of habeas corpus is. The other component of this is a resentencing, so it's two tracks. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office, led by George Gascon, has stated that they are reviewing the new evidence. They have not yet commented on the family's recent press conference or the push for resentencing, but everyone else is talking about it. The Menendez brothers' case, family members are pushing for their release before Thanksgiving, as the Los Angeles DA considers recommending them for resentencing in the 1989 murders of their parents. The Menendez brothers haven't just been sitting around for the past 30 years. They've been on a serious self-improvement grind. We're talking joining programs, helping other inmates, and even creating their own initiatives to help rehab prisoners. Lyle just leveled up big time. He graduated from this groundbreaking program that's a collaboration between UC Irvine and the Department of Corrections. He earned a prestigious bachelor's degree behind bars. Talk about making the most of a bad situation. And that's not all. The brothers came up with the Green Space Project. It's based 
on how they do rehab in Norway, all about helping prisoners get ready for life on the outside, even the prison staff is noticing. Their lawyer, Mark Garagos, is out here waving letters from correctional officers like report cards. These guards are basically saying, yeah, these guys have changed for real. It's like getting a good review from the toughest critics out there. We have a number of correctional officers who have actually said if released, they should be released and that they would welcome them as neighbors in their neighborhood. In 2018, after being apart for almost three decades, Lyle and Eric Menendez finally got to be in the same prison unit at Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego. This reunion was huge for them, allowing them to support each other and team up on their rehab efforts. Their case blew up again recently, thanks to the Netflix series Monsters the Lyle and Eric Menendez Story. It got people talking and took a fresh look at the brothers' abuse claims. Some folks think the brothers are trying to use this new attention to get out of prison, but their supporters say it's just giving a new generation a chance to see the case differently, with a better understanding of trauma and abuse. The Menendez family is holding on to hope for a good outcome. Their aunt Joan, who's turning 1993 soon, just wants to see her nephew's home for Thanksgiving. The DA's office is set to have a hearing in the next few months, and it could go a few ways new trial, resentencing, or keeping things as they are. Whatever happens, it's going to take some time. This case is making people think hard about justice, rehabilitation, and how we understand trauma and abuse now versus back then. As their cousin Anna Maria put it, this isn't about politics. It's about finding the truth, delivering justice, and creating space for healing. While Lyle, Eric, and their supporters wait for what's next, their story reminds us how complicated the mix of trauma, justice, and second chances can be. We don't know yet if they'll end up free, but their case is definitely making us question what we think about crime, punishment, and the long-term effects of abuse. It's heavy stuff, but it's important to think about.